Hello friends, uh, let us discuss the experiment to determine the residence time distribution of a, uh, any uh, reactor which is a continuous one like uh, PFR, like CSTR. So actually this residence time distribution concept is only useful in a flow reactor, in a continuous reactor. Right? So this is the setup for that. So actually this vessel is, it can be a PFR or it can be a CSTR where in which you have to study the residence time distribution. So what experiment we are conducting to determine that? What we do? We allow the water to pass through the vessel. First, the vessel will fill completely and then we inject the tracer material. In our laboratory, we use one normal NOH. We use one normal NOH as a tracer material. So, tracer material is which, due to which we can trace the path of fluid which is flowing through the reactor. So, that is the concept. So, this tracer material is injected in a single shot. So this graph explains pulse input. Pulse input refers to a single shot in which the tracer material is given as a feed to the vessel. Now then flow, uh, flow of the water is again started. Okay. And then the water along the tracer is trying to move through the reactor. That is the concept. So we take effluent sample after a periodic time interval. So this table indicate this table indicate this table indicate the time recorded and this gives the concentration of the effluent. So we note the time and concentration here in the table. So this effluent uh, is uh, its concentration is continuously recorded for several minutes. Uh, in the interval of 30 seconds or in the interval of 1 minute also. Okay. If you decrease the interval, you will get more readings and uh, the accuracy of RDD determination will be more. So that is the concept. So here this graph indicates in one shot the tracer material is injected but in one shot the tracer material is not coming. It is gradually coming. Gradually it is increasing and gradually its concentration is decreasing in the effluent sample, right? So this is what the experiment of residence time distribution study. Now how to do the calculations? So let us come to the calculation part. Now this is the observation and calculation table together. So this, this is the time reading and this is the concentration reading. Let's we have some readings in our hand. Let's say 10, 15, 20 readings we are having in our hand. So what first thing we will do? We will plot a graph of concentration and time. So that called as a C versus T graph. So actually that graph is a C versus T graph. C versus T graph. So what this graph gives? This graph gives total pressure which is coming out as a effluent. So this area you can calculate and you can directly have the value of CT. CT is the total concentration of the effluent coming out of the flow reactor. Right? So you can have New, uh, by numerical integration you can have this uh, these readings you can use to calculate CT or you can use graph both technique can, can be used to calculate the CT value so what is the formula of that 0 to infinity infinity is a more time means you have given uh, more time for effluent to come so uh, let's say you have recorded 40, 30 time uh, readings so this 0 to infinity, CRDB, 
what is CR? It is the individual concentration into DT. DT is the operator, means concentration, your record versus time. Okay, so this is CT. Now, after finding CT value, after using these two columns, now let us come to the third column. Third column is exit edge. E indicate exit edge. So, E indicate edge means edge, edge is a time interval in which the fluid is there in the vessel. Okay, before leaving the reactor. Now, every fluid is taking some different time right to leave the reactor and that is why it is an exit age distribution which is also called as a residence time distribution so rtd is also called as a exit age distribution so this value of exit age is calculated using this formula Every value, every value, this value, let's say this value means after 4, 5 reading you will get some value of concentration. So whatever value you have got, you will divide it by total concentration, CT. So CI upon CT, you will get some value, CI upon CT, again for this, you will get value. Means for every corresponding concentration, you will get corresponding value of exit age. So, exit age is what? It is the fraction of concentration coming out of the reactor divided by total concentration of the uh, pressure, right? So, here what we are trying to get? We are trying to get the fraction of material which is coming out of the reactor divided by total amount of pressure material. So, what this indicates? This indicates the exit age. That is how much time every molecule of the tracer material has spent within the reactor. So, EI, its formula is very simple. Individual concentration divided by total concentration. So, what is total concentration? It is 0 to infinity CIDT. So, this is what the formula is. Simple, exit age. So, every value of this exit age will be further useful. So, we have to record all the values of exit age distribution. So, all the values will be different. Hence, it is an exit age distribution which is also part of the RDD, residence time distribution. Now, let us come to the next point. If all the time intervals of the uh, fluid which are coming out are different, then which time will be called as an average time? average residence time. So, the concept of average residence time T bar. So, this T bar is calculated using these readings only. Right? So, to calculate T bar, what we are doing, we are multiplying each value of T and E here. So, this bracket, these values, these all values are what outcome of this and this. This value into this value is this value. This value into this value is this value in this way. So, we take several values of T into EI. Means every time value is multiplied with its exit age. Right? So, this column will give the value of T bar. How? We will plot the graph. Of what? T E bar, uh, sorry, T E I versus T. We will plot this graph. Or numerically also you can get numerical integration by using numerical integration also you can get T bar from this. So T E bar uh, E I versus T. This graph also we are we can able to find value of T bar. Just what we have to do. What we have to do? We have to just plot the graph of T E I versus T. Okay? And then we have to find the area. 
Area is number of square into multiplied by scale on x axis into scale on y axis. Simply it will give the value of t bar. And t bar is what? It is the average time spent by each molecule before leaving the reactor. So that is what the value of t bar is. And your real reactor is having a performance close to close to ideality if and only if t bar is 10 inch to tau and we are knowing the concept of tau tau is a space time space time is volume of the reactor divided by volumetric flow rate and this space time we are using in ideal condition and in real condition we are using t bar value so this t bar value if it is very close to tau it means your design of the reactor is good so that is the indication of this. So that is why T bar value is so important. Now, as we are going practically, you cannot be very close to this. So what is the variation? What is the deviation? So how to calculate this? Now these are not the chemical quantities. These are the numerical quantities or these are the statistical quantities which are used for the evaluation of any system or anything. And that is why, now further thing that is Calculation of variance. Variance, it symbol is sigma square. How it is calculated? As we are having value of T bar now. So, we will subtract T minus T bar value. Whatever T bar value you have got, that is the single value. But we have different values of T. So, each T value will be subtracted with T bar. Whether it is positive or negative, its square will be positive only. Then it will be multiplied with the individual E I value. So this value, whatever value you will get, is due to E I and square of the difference of T and T bar. Correct? So you will get all the values of T minus T bar bracket square into E I. Either you will use numerical technique, numerical integration to have the value of sigma square or you are having the choice of plotting a graph. So numerically 0 to infinity t minus t bar bracket square into e into e i into dt. This is what the formula is. So what this indicate to plot a graph of yes t minus t bar bracket square into e versus dt. If you plot this graph Whatever the nature of the graph is, you have to just take the area and that area is nothing but variance. So variance you can calculate using this technique and its square root will give the value of deviation, simple. If sigma square is, let's say it is 9, so it means sigma is 3, you have to just take the square root. And this value of deviation, if it is large, it means your uh, reactor is more deviated from the reality or from the, uh, sorry, from the ideality, okay. And if this value is less, your uh, whatever uh, design is, it is close to the reality or close to the ideality. And reality is very close to ideality, like that. So deviation values are very important uh, statistically. But for us, more important is to find the value of T bar. So this experiment is very essential and nowadays in a design uh, field, these experiments are simulated and the result of the simulation are then useful for the final fabrication of the reactor. And then, hence in this experiment or this kind of calculations will help you to understand the things. Hope you understand the video. Uh, and each and every concept of it. Uh, if you have any doubt, please ask me. Uh, I have my contact number 9673000954 or below the video you can comment and if you like you can share and subscribe. Thank you.